Hello and welcome everyone. So this is the part two of the Tricky C Sharp questions. And first of all, let me um, wish you the season's best greeting for a very happy new year 2020. And let's proceed to the questions and answers. All right, so what will be output on the right? Now I've got a, an email class and that has got a write message which writes to the console something. And there is a bull class which derives from the animal and it actually writes a message from B with a write message method which takes a double. Now in the main method, you know, in, in the test method or the driver main method, I'm initializing a instance of class B, a bull class with the instance B and um, what will be the output if you call the write message method and pass i. Now let's see the answer and then let's um, analyze. All right, the out answer will be, output will be the message from B. Okay, so we are calling the write message method of object B, instance of bull type, and that will output this message. Now this here, the thing to note is that you know input argument i to the method has no effect on the output all right so the next question is again what will be output on the right so let's see what it does you have got a static void first method and a second method and a third method and you are uh, calling the third method first passing an output type of argument of count int count and that is a integer field and then you are calling the first method and then passing just the count and then console dot right line count and then you are calling the second method where you are passing a reference to the count met, uh, count field all right and then you are writing on the console passing the count the output will be two two one and how it will ha all happen the call to the third method will assign the value 2 to the count variable as it is passed as an output parameter okay so it will assign the value 2 because you know the third method is this it is passing it as an output of uh, type integer and it is uh, passing the value 2 so the output of the console dot right line will be the value 2 now in the second part, the first method takes this value as an argument and prints it as such. Why it will do so? Because first method is, uh, it returns a void, it doesn't return anything and here the value is set to 0. But however, because it is not returning it as the output type is of void or null, so the count value remains fixed at 2. Okay third part the second method call takes count with the value of 2 as a reference argument and changes it to 1 because it is a passing by reference or by a pointer to the um, count variable okay so it is um, changing it is the changing the content of that address where the count lives and it is now giving the output to 1 now can Pointers be used in C sharp. Yes, they can be used inside the method declared with the unsafe modifier or within the unsafe block. And now you don't need to, uh, please don't forget to specify allow unsafe code in the project properties. Now you can write a C sharp pointer like this. Okay, you have to label it with unsafe. And when you try to build the prog uh, program, it will give you a um, prompt that you know you need to change the property and if you go ahead with the yes then it will automatically change the um, project property and put a allow unsafe to be goes true so now all of these uh, codes that i am actually analyzing you know i am uh, writing as a questions these are all tested on a c sharp solution so i will put that solution um, in a github and paste the link on the description okay so what will happen if the adjacent code is executed so you have got a two floats float variable 
and they have been assigned to the maximum value, first value and the second value, float, and what will be the result of the product of these two variables. Now, if the above code is executed, it will result in the infinity as the output. Okay. So, float and double are not integral types. That is why if you use checked, overflow does not take place. Okay. So, so now the next question was about given an instance of circle of the following class on the right hand side. So, we have got a field class of circle which has got a private double field, uh, a private field which returns a, which is of a type double or radius. And it's a field class in the sense that it cannot be derived from. And you have got a calculate method which takes in a function, you know, parameter inline function with uh, arguments of double, double, two arguments of double type, and it returns a double. And it returns the output with operated on the radius. So now you have to write the code to calculate the circumference of the circle without modifying the circle itself. Now, in this case, this question is just brought forward for analyzing the type of question that might be asked from the senior developers. Now, the preferred answer would be of the form circle.calculate. This R, it's a lambda expression, it's a lambda operator. R goes to 2 times math dot pi dot uh, two, 2 times math dot pi times R. So, 2 pi R is the calculation of the circumference from the radius, r being the radius. So, here we do not have access to the private radius field. So, you have got the private radius field of the object. So, we tell the object itself to calculate the circumference by passing it to the calculation function inline, okay? passing it the calculation function inline, which is the, this is the calculation function, you are passing it inline. Now, a lot of c -sharp programmers do not understand function value parameters very well. So, in this case, the purpose is to see if the applicant understands how to formulate a call to calculate which matches the method's definition. So, this is the method's definition. Okay. Now, in this, um, now we have um, done with this um, course on five tricky questions in c -sharp again. So, uh, we have seen quite a few uh, code snippets and we have analyzed them and found whether, I mean, what kind of output they will um, bring up on the console, on the uh, console command line. And we have also analyzed them. So, in the next part, we'll see a few more questions, tricky questions.